to PhD students. I teach um, freshmen how to write for the media. Um, I also teach public relations and social media. And um, I always find um, giving presentations on social media or teaching classes on social media can be, believe it or not, a little dangerous. <laughs> um, and the reason is that, um, and, and I'm not going to get into deep media sociology, but everybody, every person in this room brings a unique perspective to how they share about their lives, about the things that they want to be involved in, like this organization. Um, you bring so many things to your, your, your platform, the way that you communicate, the things that you share and the things that you choose to share. Um, so one of the things that um, we were talking about when we had the first conversation a few months ago um, is uh, I have, there, there's a lot of different um, personality tests that will give you, you could be an owl, a bird, a peacock, all these kind of things. So one of the things that I've done today is to kind of help you understand this kind of paradigm shift that has occurred over the last 10, de uh, 10 years or in the last decade um, is that we now, communications, is 86.3% social. So most of the communications that are going on in the world, commerce communications, environmental communications, and I, I'm sure you've been through it too, political communications, most of the communications that reach us has some form of social platform that either engages with us and whether we're on them or not, we are likely hearing messages from people in real time that they learned somewhere on a social media platform. So 80 some percent. So here's the challenge of being a social media professor. Every semester, the stuff changes, right? And so I can't be, you know, that cool political science professor, or that cool anthropology professor who gets to come in with their old notes and, you know, kind of sit down and lecture people on, you know, theories and all this kind of stuff because social media is a radically changing idea. Um, and one of the things that makes it change is you. Social media, the, the renditions of Facebook, the proliferation of TikTok, um, all of the new platforms that we use today have been changed and created based on how real people use them. Okay, And that's really important to kind of think about, that social media is an extension of us. It is a process of helping us understand kind of who we are, where we fit in, um, so that we can avoid this, this is a very, okay, one theory. I'm only gonna talk about one theory. Um, there's a theory that we talk a lot about in media sociology called the spiral of silence. And if people feel like they're not part of the majority, the majority idea, then they tend to remain silent. And so, and then what happens, because pe some people are remaining silent, the dominant idea tends to proliferate and take over. And so one of the things that social media has taught us is that we often, whether we like it or not, because I run into people all the time, and this is why teaching social media is a little dangerous, who don't want anything to do with it. Um, one of my biggest mistakes of my lifetime, nine years ago, my mother, who lives in North Carolina, came to visit me one Christmas here in Reno. And I bought her um, a, an iPad. Yeah, I bought her an iPad that year for Christmas. Um, we get deals at the university. So, um, so I bought her an iPad, and I got her on the iPad. I signed her up for Facebook. Well, le almost 11 years later, I am my mother's 24-7 technical support line. <laughs> I spend um, quite a bit of time in the evenings She's trying to figure out why her keyboard has split across the screen. How does she bring it back? Um, why are people not liking my posts? Why, you know, she gets all torn up about things. And I'm like, mother, you misspelled three words. You need to go back, edit it, put some photos in there, make it a little prettier. I think you'll get engagement. And, and it's just, you know, she posts things that my friends are her friends. 
fortunately, I have control and I fix them. She thinks everything just works so beautifully. She doesn't know I'm in the background <laughs> correcting all of this. Stuff. Anyway. <laughs> so, so um, why social media? And, and there's so many reasons why social media is so important. I mean, you know, we like to know things. I mean, we want to be in the know. You know, um, we want people to understand that um, we like to hear what other people think. Um, we like to catalog our lives. I mean, I don't know about you, but I have 3,742 friends on Facebook. I've been on Facebook since 2009. And I now, you know, every morning I wake up and see what I was doing on November, you know, 15th in 2010. And my life is cataloged. And I have this experience. And when I'm no longer on this planet, my life will continuously be cataloged for future generations in some ways. And so I think about that sometimes. Um, and there's this big movement of research in my world of what do you do when you're no longer here in real time and you just, just exist in digital time. There's new companies being developed on how to move your social world into this kind of place for eternity. You know, I call it the heaven of, um, of the future. But um, so there's a lot of reasons, but just some big ones. Um, I'm, I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm, like a year ago, I would never said this. But it looks like TikTok is going to become the most relevant and the most useful and the most used social media platform probably by the middle of next year. I, I can't believe I'm saying that. But all the data points are pointing to it. And I'm not surprised because... Um, it is actually quite interesting that all of the things that I've been teaching, TikTok kind of puts it all right there for you. Um, they're short, they're engaging, they're interesting. And if you don't know anything about TikTok, one of the things that makes TikTok <coughs> quite powerful and interesting is the fact that um, it has these great algorithms that when you start watching videos, it learns about you very, very quickly quicker than any social media platform I've ever experienced. So theoretically, it will create a world for you that you like without you really doing much, which is kind of what all social media does, but TikTok especially has become um, a thing. One of the other things is, is that um, if Facebook were a country, it would be the third largest country on the planet. They are people in, you know, in um, barrios, in Brazil, people in Delhi, in India, who are engaging readily and constantly um, using Facebook. Um, Facebook has, and I have a class on this, Facebook has its problems, but I still consider it probably one of the, if not the, until TikTok takes over, most important social media platforms that exist in the world today. Um, the fastest growing users of Facebook are people in their 60s, which is very interesting. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that, and that is because, you know, when people in their teens got off because people in their 30s and 40s got on, they didn't want their parents seeing what they were doing, they moved to other social media platforms, and now the children of the people in their 60s and 70s are on Facebook because they want to see what their daughter's doing, thus the pictures of their grandchildren. So. All of that is sort of kind of going into the circle um, and all this. So um, I'm going to explain to you kind of how social media fits into this big paradigm to kind of get us started so we can wrap our brains around it. Um, I hope you won't mind me talking about being a great lover, but that it always <laughs> tends. I tried all kinds of ways to do this, but the word lover gets the most attention because everybody wants to be a great lover, right? Deep down. Okay. <laughs> So um, this individual right here, this young man, <laughs> he has a message that he wants to share to this young woman right here, who um, is what we would call in my business, his target audience, right? His, um, his stakeholder, um, his principal engagement person. Um, and so in marketing, if we look at marketing and tear the word marketing apart, I mean, the, the secret of the word marketing lives at the beginning of it, the word market. So this individual has looked at a lot of data. He's looked at the market of lovers. 
right? And he sees there's all kinds of possibilities out there, people with shared interests, people with, you know, who live geographically close by, <clears throat> all those things that we think about are, um, are um, sorry, it's dry here, did you know that? <laughs> yeah, and so, so he has done this marketing analysis and he has determined that his best luck, his best opportunities rest with this target audience. Um, public relations is a little bit different than marketing in one very important way. Public relations is we need to find someone who has first-hand knowledge of what we're sharing and have them to share on your behalf. And one of the reasons that public relations is quite effective is because um, it's more believable. Right? I mean, you know, think about soccer games, watching your kids play games. I mean, when you hear things in the bleachers from other people about products and opportunities and churches and all these kind of things, it becomes very believable to us because real people have had an experience with it and thus they're sharing it with us. So um, when I say that I'm a PR professor, um, and sometimes I'm a social media professor, it just depends, but Primarily, I do teach PR, it's the umbrella. I teach people how to build relationships that will benefit them, um, mutually be beneficial relationships. And you know, the way I teach public relations, truthful and open and transparent relationships um, that matter. Now, advertising is a little bit different in that advertising how is the real unique thing about advertising is that we have a lot of control over advertising for one simple reason. We're paying for it, right? We pay to play. <laughs> and so because we're paying for those messages to reach people, we have a whole lot of control. So in this case, we repeat the message. I'm a great lover. I'm a great lover. I'm a great lover in multiple locations based on research that we've done. So for example, if we were targeting this young lady, again, still our target audience, we would know where she drives to work every day. So we would put this message on a billboard or we would know what platforms she was reading and therefore that message would be shared in those locations. And so the idea of advertising is it's a controlled method and, and social media has a lot of advertising involved in it, but advertising is controlled because we pay for it now inner social media i have a mute button oh, yeah a mute button yes <laughs> yeah a lot of people do we skip over advertising and we have all this kind of decisions on what we're going to watch in 2022 because you know if you're on hulu and you don't want to pay for the full plan you're going to have to watch advertising or if you're using you know um you might be recording your um your cable television and watching it later so that you can just fast forward through the advertising, which brings up a whole nother level of understanding because we have to teach you to engage people very quickly. They, they, you know, they have, we don't have a lot of time today. Um, in fact, when I started teaching advertising 15 years ago, we said 15 seconds and now we have two seconds. So it has really shifted in the amount of time that we have to do it. But social media is, can someone help me find, a great lover. So if you look at this strategically, you start to understand that there are people having conversations all across the social media platforms of the world. And it's our job to find those people who are looking for what we offer. You know, like what are we, can we provide them? Can we provide them a networking opportunity? Can we provide them a friendship? Can we provide them information? Can we provide them? So a big part of social media is being a traffic cop. Um, sometimes letting things come through and sometimes stopping the traffic on the sides. Social media is also another analogy that I use is an apartment manager. You know, sometimes you bring people into your social media and show them the third floor apartment with the vaulted ceilings and the swimming pool when you drive them around in the golf cart. But when their toilet doesn't flush, that apartment manager is responsible for fixing the toilet. 
So in some ways, that's also how social media works, is you're either an apartment manager or a traffic cop, and you're trying to move information as quickly and as effectively as possible. And social media, in some ways, also has a mute button. So we have to understand that some people are not going to engage with us, and we have to work better at finding ways to bring them. Um, journalism, uh, been around a long time. Um, I teach at a journalism school, and it's really interesting that you know journalism is dead, but we have the highest job placement at the university. 92% of our students have a job in two months after graduation. We even beat nursing. And the reason is they have to take a national exam. But once they <laughs> um, anyway, so but journalism really is a filter. Um, it is it's kind of like PR. Like, for example, if somebody came today and did a story about your conference in the Reno Gazette Journal, people who read about it would really believe about the important work that you do, more so than if you stood out on the parking lot and tried to broadcast it to people. So, so <coughs> journalism is a great, great tool to help us share information and, again, to make it more believable and, and more engaging. Finally, this is what it's all about. Um, we want our target audience to walk up to us and repeat our message on our behalf. I understand you're a great lover. And when that occurs, this really cool thing happens. It's called branding. That you have a brand. All of us have a brand. Um, I have a brand. Part of my brand is my cool glasses. You know, like, you know, you have no idea how students listen to me, 19 year olds listen to me with these glasses on if I don't have them on. It's the craziest thing. And I can see down and I can see you. So <laughs> it's also very helpful, you know, because things happen. I keep my notes when I teach on my phone. So I'm always trying to, you know, my I, I doctor said, Todd, you're 50. It's time to do it, dude. Okay. Um, anyway, so branding really is this really interesting thing. So I, when I, one other example about branding is when you walk into Target, how do you feel? What is your feeling about Target? The feeling that you get when you go into Target versus Walmart um, or JCPenney or um, um, Cabela's, those, that is a brand. That is the way that you feel. And when you feel the right way, you're going to spend more money. Right? And that is sort of um, the promise of branding. All right. So in case you don't know, I have to, just to be a good guy, I need to give you a definition <laughs> of what social media is. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to have a definition. There's all kinds of arguments in my department about how you define definition of social media. But this is the one I kind of like. And it's simple. Um, so a computer-based <laughs> technology, and this is important, that facilitates shared sharing of ideas, thoughts, and information through virtual networks and communities. Um, so the first, um, my mom, let's go back to my mom for a minute. Uh, my mom, her first kind of entry into social media was um, she had a message board in her community. She grows roses. She's very, 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 her roses sometimes are more important to her than me. I'm not kidding. <laughs> she loves her roses. And there's like 10 other little ladies on her street who also grow roses. And they have a message board because Wanda created one in like 2005. And she's still on it. And they share everything there is possibly to know about how they use their eggshells and all this kind of, it's just a hoot. I love reading it. Uh, what they say to each other. And they give each other pet talks, even though they know that their roses are better than the other lady, but they're pet talking. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really. But that was the beginning, really, of social media. And email, email, good old email, in some ways is a form of social media, too. Um, it is the ability to share information, share thoughts in a capital-intensive way. So, you know, if you compare it to the one-on-one -on -one or the one to 28, I don't know, I didn't count how many is in here, um, social media is a much more effective way. And the fact that we're being live, live streamed right now and recorded, this information can be seen by hundreds of people because it is live streaming is a form of social media. And then when it's recorded, it can be put somewhere and cataloged so that it can, and you can put keywords on it. And then when people are looking for information, they may be able to find this 
um, on the internet. So social media, really, there's a couple other points I just want to make very quickly about social media. Um, virtual networks and communities. So a virtual network is a network of individuals who are connected virtually. And communities, um, I teach this graduate class and we talk about the strength of weak ties. This famous guy in 1975, his name's Gravetter, who wrote this big treatise on, if you want to find a job, like a new job, I teach my students this, you don't ask your closest contacts, you ask like four contacts away from them. So your best friends, brother-in-laws, daughters, uncle. And if you do that, the strength of weak ties, you're going to have more success outside of your immediate network by stepping out of your network and building sort of dyads and triads outside of your immediate network. So if you think about social media, um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram, I'm on TikTok, I'm on Facebook, but I don't use them all equally. You know, I choose to use things that, that benefit me. And so every year, I mean, like right now, students are registering in classes. You know, my job security is my classes have to be filled, right? So I do all this work on social media because I know my students are going to be on social, checking me out, reading my teaching reviews, reading all this stuff. So I create kind of an environment right now so that they choose to take me as a, 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 a student. And then about over Christmas, I spend a lot of time getting speaking gigs in the summer. You know, people will fly you to Vegas, so much fun, put you up in a hotel, pay you a little money, sit by the pool, give a speech, sit by the pool. I mean, it's a good gig. And so, um, you know, so, so I have some real specific social media goals that I um, intend. Okay, let's talk about my four social media animals. Okay, <laughs> let's start with my friend, the meerkat. And I like to call the meerkat the watcher. Um, one of the things that's not in my bio, but I used to be a television reporter in North Carolina, and I did a segment um, on Saturday mornings called At the Zoo. So I got to go to a zoo and do little stories with zookeepers and kids. It was so much fun. Um, and then when the zoo had an opening, I went to work there for a couple of years as the public information officer um, for the zoo. And so meerkats are really fascinating creatures, okay? Meerkats are watchers. They are protectors. They are the people who are out there. Somebody takes a nap, and almost always, if you've ever seen this TV show called Meerkat Manor, <laughs> you can see that the meerkat sort of takes turns keeping a watch for everybody. And I believe that there are certain animals on social media that do the same thing. They are just simply there to watch and protect you. Um, and they watch and they don't comment, they don't share, they don't say very much. But when something really excites them or concerns them, they pound away. Here I go. I'm over it. So um, none of, incidentally, none of these animals are better than the other. They're just four animals. Okay. So um, we have the watcher. Um, we also have what I call the sharer, the lion. Now, the lion, um, I mean, we're taught in like kindergarten that the lion is the king of the jungle um, because he's kind of at the top of the food chain, right? But lions are typically, especially male lions, they kind of hang out and let the females do all the work. And then they kind of show up and feed. I don't know if you know that about lions, yeah. the male lions. Um, and so... Um, what I call this is the sharer. These are individuals on social media who are just sharing all the time. Like they are just putting things out there all the time for one simple reason. They want something to happen so they can step in and benefit from it. Right? And so the sharer, the line, I, say, I would say um, there are not many college professors who are lines. Most of them are meerkats. But I will say that a lot of, like, um, you know, people I know from my home in North Carolina, who, by the way, I love deeply, but disagree with a lot of them on a lot of different issues. Um, but I noticed that, I mean, you know, from the, I get 
sometimes 20 posts a day from one individual. And I think sometimes, and I'm not trying to psychoanalyze the lion, but I do think sometimes that maybe their real life, they don't have as much control in their real life, and therefore they try to maintain more control in their virtual lives. Mm -hmm. And so that's the sharer. Um, and then I call this the commenter, um, the gorilla, who um, sort of, he's also kind of a watcher, but he comments all the time. Like anything you post, he's going to like it, he's going to love it, he's going to laugh at it, but he's going to comment, 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 comment. Um, so I call the, um, there's a lot of commenters out there who are doing it. And then I call it the producer, the peacock. And uh, the peacock is really, really, really interesting. And um, the producer is this idea that um, sometimes um, I am going to watch and I am going to pay attention. And then one day I've had all I can take and I'm going to spread my feathers. You probably know people like that. They've seen it. They've seen it all. They're not going to really be engaged with you. But then one day out of the blue, there they are. And they're there for a while. Um, there's a lot of peacocks, a lot of producers um, during the campaign's um, cycle. A lot, a lot of people who have been watching sort of change their social media animal to um, the peacock instantly, and they kind of find a way to, um, to do it. So keep in mind that we have the meerkat, the lion, the gorilla, and the um, peacock. Um, and as we go through, I'm going to give you 10 points, just 10 great points on ways to become a real social media animal. So um, the first one is you got to plan. And I know this sounds silly because it seems to me, and I do it too, you know, I go out to dinner with my friends. They all look so pretty. We take a picture and we put it on Facebook or Instagram. Um, but... I will tell you, I am often telling my friends, um, I, I'm trying to recruit students right now. I don't have a picture on Facebook, <laughs> right? Or I don't want that on there because I do have a plan in the back of my mind um, all the time. And so one of the things that we know is that we need to constantly, as social media animals, ask these very important questions. To whom are we speaking, right? You may have you know, 800 friends on Facebook but you may only be speaking to 10 or 20 of them, you know? So you really got to constantly be thinking about who would help me be successful? Who would help me get more volunteers? Who would help me get more members? Who would help me do the things that I want to do? So when I talk about social media, I'm also talking about it kind of in the, the realm of, you know, National Grange, but also as you as individuals, how you can participate and become part of the solution um, what types of content do they want to engage with? Um, I mean, I know what students like to engage with. I mean, I have to create TikTok videos of me kind of walking through the spiral of silence. You know, in my we have this real big production room, and I create them, I post those TikToks, I get them out there, they go crazy. They share them like crazy. So I know what they need. Um, are there events? Are there holidays? Are there momentous moments? that you need to be highlighting in your social media to reach the people that you want to reach? And do you know what your goals are on social media? Do you know what you're trying to accomplish? Do you want more members? Do you want to raise money? Do you want more sales? Do you want more followers? Do you want more friends? Those are all different goals. So you really have to think about what is it that I want to uh, accomplish? Um, I, every time I say this, I, it sounds a little preachy, and I'm really sorry when I say that, but I will tell you, I'm not talking about you need to have a, a plan you pull out of your drawer on social media, but you do certainly need to know in the back of your mind, who are you trying to reach, why are you trying to reach them, and what do you want them to do with the content that you share with them. Um, and then, in addition to being a planner, you also have to be quite flexible. Um, and this is kind of the, the, the joke about social media, is you can plan for weeks, and then you can drop a campaign, 
and then the world has changed. You know, Putin has done something, something in the world has changed. We become suddenly irrelevant and we have to find a new way to reach those people. Here's a really cool thing about social media, though, unlike any other communication um, approach. We will know if it works really fast. So we can rechange our message really, really fast or delete things really, really fast if it's just not working. So um, you really have to kind of know, um, I'll never forget, I used to teach this class called Social Media for Beginners. It was tough. And this was like 2010. And, um, and I called it helping people find their passwords. <laughs> That's the first time there's nobody familiar with their password. So it was like, oh my God, it's a password. Um, anyway, so I sent this long email. Please remember your passwords. <laughs> because that was the first class, finding your passwords. Anyway, so, but I remember one night I was teaching Facebook and how to use it. And I signed on and it completely changed. Everything had changed. <laughs> you know, like I went and I went, <laughs> so basically the class and I figured out Facebook together that night. And so I could have been smart and been flexible and Googled that would, you know, when's Facebook's next rendition launching? And it would have been Wednesday night at six, which was when my class started. And so anyway, being able to be flexible is just super important um, when it comes to social media. Um, profiles. Um, I just got to tell you about profiles. So you all, if you're on Facebook, and by the way, I didn't ask everybody, how many people are on Facebook? Yeah, okay, good. Um, she did this. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that profile, you know, having a good headshot, um, having descriptors of previous jobs, because Facebook aggregates those, you know, and they help you find people <coughs> and it helps them find you. I will just tell you, I'm just going to tell you, people friend me all the time, and if they do not have a headshot, I delete them. It's because I'm not going to spend five minutes trying to figure out who they are, you know. And it's really funny. I, I got a friend request about eight months ago from someone who had this last name I didn't know, and I almost deleted her, and I realized it was my prom date. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm friends with my prom day. She has six kids. I was like, well, that ended on prom day. <laughs> anyway, so, um, anyway, so understanding your profiles and, um, and sort of really building them out is so very important. LinkedIn, if you're on LinkedIn, that profile is the magic. It really is. It's really what helps people find you. If you're looking for a job, if you're looking for opportunities, if you're looking for, you know, connections, um, LinkedIn, that profile piece is really, really important. Um, and from a, from a company standpoint, I often will go into social media and see things that are old, things, you know, I've even seen they have a new logo on their website, but they haven't put it on their social yet. So, you know, everything's connected. So being relevant, being current, keeping things current, all very, very, um, very important. Um, the next one is you really have to tailor your content. In other words, um, your audience on LinkedIn, I promise, is going to be very, very different than your audience on TikTok. And so you really have to think about how do you tailor content. Um, so, for example, Instagram, you're going to get a lot of really great engagement by having really short videos. In fact, I would say a video that's more than five seconds in 2022 probably isn't that effective. Um, and if somebody ever has to hit the more button on Facebook, you've lost them, right? So being able to really understand that the audience, what the audience needs, um, what do they want to see, how do they want to see it, and if you're talking to young people, you got to be really short because they, you know, have yes. Do you think? Um, a lot of us are talking about a Facebook page or a LinkedIn account for our Grange. Is, is LinkedIn appropriate for like a Grange? It page? is. And you guys have one, right? Yeah, we have a National Grange Facebook page. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, LinkedIn. Sorry. Yeah, no, we have Grange. Does not. We're all over the place. Oh, yeah. So one of the things, if you had like a regional or a local Grange and you created a LinkedIn, then you could link it to the national one. And that would help people at the national level find you at the local level. Yeah. 
and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, that would be um, really, really. Cool. LinkedIn I went through just, all your social media. No, for this. Uh, LinkedIn just right for me is just now. When I when it first came out, we were all encouraged in college to get a LinkedIn because it will help you advance your career. And that's what it initially was. And, and now it's kind of expanding its image beyond just job searching and career focused goals. And it's becoming more of a professional networking site. Um, so it is, I, I mean, a long time ago, there weren't even the option to put pro, or company profiles on. So they're just becoming yeah. kind of a thing for, for companies. That are <laughs> yeah, so they have really opened up. And uh, I will tell you, I, I went to LinkedIn a couple of years ago to their main headquarters in San Francisco. One of my former professor colleagues now is the head of research and development there. She gave us this great big tour. I mean, they have a newsroom. They have like legacy journalists from the New York Times who worked at LinkedIn, who are doing putting all this great content on LinkedIn. And now that Twitter is in this purgatory, <laughs> we don't really know what's going on. And I, honestly, I can't even read about it. It's so it's just so distressing um, that. Um, LinkedIn has this really good potential for really for kind of launching itself into a you know the top three platforms, and I think that LinkedIn is going to also be a very important platform in the next three or four years because you know Twitter. It's so funny, you know, he fired everybody at Twitter, and he wanted to rearrange it, but he needed them to rearrange it, so he rehired them. Can you imagine having to pack the box and come back? Yeah. And these are really smart people too. Yeah. So um, anyway. All right, use free tools. There's so many great free tools. My favorite is Canva, um, but there's some others called um, Buffer and Upsplash. Um, most of the work that you would need as an organization or as an individual is completely and totally free. And it's very, Canva is very, very user friendly. I mean, you could take an image and you could write things on it, you can make it move. You could gift it. You could do all kinds of fun things on Canva, and then and there's even a button that puts it straight on your social media platform if you want to. Um, there's also some analytical work that you could put on there, like you could plug some keywords into it, and they could do some things so people can find you. So use free tools, and they're all out there. And I promise you, my mom uses them. So um, she puts roses around her picture on Canva. So if she can do it, I know you, anybody can. So um, I'm her 24 hours. Mom. Yeah, good old mom. Um, research and monitor. So one of the things um, is you really need to always try to figure out what's happening in your industry, what's happening in your community, what's happening in the world. Because really what happens in Ukraine can have an, infect, an impact on things that we do here in Reno or in your hometown, in Iowa, in North Carolina, in, you know, Sparks and all over the place. So being able to be aware of what are the rules that social media, all the social media platforms, you can go into like the Facebook overview and you can read all kinds of really cool things about what's coming, what's next, what's not working anymore, what are we getting rid of? And again, there's a whole class on Facebook has its problems, but it's still a very effective, very effective tool. Yes. Oh, you're stretching. Okay. No worries. Um, so is there something trending? Um, so like, for example, um, you know, I think a lot about, um, you know, something big that's happening in the world. Is that something you should be sharing and adding your own comment to in order to build engagement to get people to... Um, to engage with you. Um, I often, you know, anything that happens um, in advertising or anything that happens, like some kind of crisis, crisis communications issue, I'm sharing all about it, writing my own editorial on it, getting that out there. I will even go in and create a podcast, get the podcast out if I think it's important enough, and then share that podcast across all my social channels to get people to listen to it. And then they may subscribe and they wait for my next podcast. So I have other people waiting for me to talk to them about another issue. Um, and so being able to research and monitor and understand what's going on is a very good way to become a great social media animal. So um, you need to know who your competition is. Um, and sometimes it's the weirdest. It's not always the other organization or the other company that makes you know, sprockets. 
Sometimes it's the restaurant down the street. Maybe it's um, the people who you share a parking lot with. Um, you know, one of my favorite experiments is I sometimes will go, I have my class, my social media class. Um, I'll say, everybody, I want you to write this on Facebook. I'm looking for a new dentist. Could someone recommend one? And so I do that at the beginning of the class. Class is two hours long. At the end of the two hours, you ready for this? There's 20 people in the class. I have 700 recommendations on dentists. 700. 700. So, and it's such a thing because I aggregate them and put them all on the screen and it just scrolls. And that's just from 20 people asking a question. And usually they're young, they're new to Facebook, so they may have 100 friends. So sometimes half their friends give them their opinion about a good dentist in town. And so one thing that I know about competition is you can learn a lot about your competition by asking questions on social media. Like, what's your favorite, you know, um, Korean restaurant? And then all, if you're a Korean restaurant or if you're an Asian-inspired food, all of a sudden you get all kinds of information that you can learn about your competition by simply asking a question. Um, yes? Surveys? Surveys, yes. Um, I do like surveys, but I like surveys that are very simple. Yeah. Um, and then I also believe that once the survey is over, you have an opportunity to post the results. And those are opportunities now for another level of engagement. Um, don't just do a survey. The survey would be designed so that you could use the results as a way at the end to engage other people. But I do like surveys. Um, I will just tell you on social media, more than five questions is too many usually, unless it's really easy and you've got like demographical information. Are you a male or female? <coughs> you know, those kind of things. But the good stuff, five important questions, about all you can manage. You can use social media to promote a large survey, but you've got to do it very carefully because you don't want people in your networks who are probably not the right people for the survey to answer it. You know, so it gets a little tricky. Um, if you have like a private group, surveys work really well because you kind of pre establish the criteria in that group. Um, like, for example, if I were going to find out about roses, my mother's little rose Facebook group would be a great place to do a survey. And those little ladies would do it, too. <laughs> so, so um, anyway, all right. So um, manage your community. That's my eighth point about being a good social media animal. And that is um, 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 people often look for the easy wins but are users commenting on your content? Are they messaging? <laughs> if they're not, ask yourself why. Maybe the content just doesn't work for that group of people. Um, so once you have community engaging with you, then capitalize on it. Comment with people. Um, share their posts. That's how you get more engagement. So, so one of the things I just want you to think about it. It used to be, here's my bubble. Here's your bubble. So now we've got to try to figure out how we can interlock those two bubbles. And the way that we often do that is, you know, National Grange could go out and comment on their competition or comment on husbandry issues or comment on some piece of news that comes out. And then those people who are there are going to start engaging with you. And then you ultimately get to um, capitalize on it. And then um, you got to choose the right platforms. I said this earlier. You don't have to be on everything. You can't. You don't. I can't. I mean, I've never been able to keep up. There's no way. Um, I know that Facebook just isn't that important at all anymore to my college students. So I don't really put anything targeting them there. But I do use Instagram a lot, and I use TikTok a lot. And um, junior year of college, students start using LinkedIn because they're starting to worry about getting a job. So I also know that if I'm trying to recruit juniors and seniors to programs or to classes, I'm all over LinkedIn because they're all over. So you just need to know what is the right platform. They're not all, you don't need to do them all. It's just, it's just, not, it's just not doable. Um, and then finally, 
most important one is be human. And this is number 10. I think it's the most important. Um, being human is the fact that, hey, we, we make mistakes. We screw up. We, do, we say things in the wrong way. Um, fine. Address it and move on. Um, my mother used to use, I don't know why I'm talking about her so much today. Uh, <laughs> but my mother used to. She's not. She, she, yeah, yeah. she broke her ankle a couple of weeks ago, and I was in North Carolina. She's in rehab, and she's very pitiful. I talked to her all the way. So that's probably why I'm talking about her. But she's getting better. She just thinks her leg itches, and that's the big problem today. Um, she wants them to unwrap it and rewrap it, so i got to call the nurse. Anyway, so, um, anyway, so, you know, my mom, when I was a kid, um, so that we didn't use profanity, she was a kindergarten teacher. Um, somebody would, like, pull out in front of us, and she would yell, Fido! And I do that still to this day. People are in the car and they're like, what? And it stands for forget it and drive on. <laughs> you know? And it was just this like way to like be mean, but it's, it was nice. Just forget it and drive on. Um, and so to this day, when people pull out in front of me, I yell, Fido. And it's the same with social media. It really is. Like, you know, when you make a mistake, be transparent about it. I screwed up. Sorry. You know, I, I misspoke. I, I mistyped. I'm sorry I did that. Um, I'll be more careful next time. And move on. And that's human. We're humans. And so one of the reasons that I think um, that Twitter has a hashtag called hashtag fail. When you have a failure, you just put hashtag fail. I screwed up. Sorry. Boop, boop. And so um, be human. In this case, don't be an animal. You know, be a human being. And, and talk, think about what human beings want to, to know about. The most important thing that human beings want to hear about is about other human beings. It's that simple. They don't want to hear about sprockets. They don't want to hear about brands. They want to hear about people. And if you can figure out a way to talk about the brand using people, then you're going to succeed. So being human, talking about um, humans thinking about them all um, in the way. So ultimately, we want to become a curator, a curator of information. We want to sort of um, find our inner social media animal. We want to find where we fit. And sometimes we're going to have to be a peacock. Sometimes we're going to have to be a gorilla. Sometimes we're just going to have to sit back and be a lion. And other times um, we're going to have to be a meerkat and keep an eye on things. But ultimately, um, it looks like this, if you were to put it in a chart. Um, most people watch, fewer people share, even more fewer people comment, even fewer people produce, but ultimately that curation, you're having conversations with people, you're liking those things, you're being, you're planning, you know where you wanna go. Sometimes you're gonna beat your chest, other times you're just gonna watch, sometimes you're gonna spread your photos. But most of the time, social media becomes such an easy thing to do, it really is, if we have a purpose in mind. Simple, where do we want to go? Why do we want to get from this? Um, I asked someone in a class I was teaching one time, a lady who couldn't remember her password, bless her heart, and we figured it out. And I said, so why, why are you in here? Why are you in this class? And she said, I simply want to know what's going on with my grandchildren. What a great purpose, <laughs> you know? And so, I thought about it. I'm like, so here's what you need to do. You need to comment on their thing. You need some content. Let your grandchildren know about you. Take a picture of yourself shopping at Dillard's. You know, show them. Maybe you could post things about shopping for my grandkids' Christmas presents. And you're kind of standing in the corner like, what is it? You know, that's how you're going to engage those people. And really kind of think about, like, how do we really think about it as a planning. I will tell you one other thing before we end today, and that is um, if you have a, an objective, you're able to rework what you're saying. When people say something and try to bring you down a completely different path, you get really, really smart over time learning how to kind of bring people back to the conversation that you came to the party to have. And social media is sort of a party. I, mean, I like that. I kind of like thinking of social media as a party. It's this great big social party, and you're trying to build friends, get a good cocktail, 
you know, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, but you're not just there. You're not a wallflower. You're actually actively participating and trying to become um, a social media animal. And then um, I'll just say I'm out of time, so I'm gonna just, I skipped a slide, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> so um, again, I'm Todd Feltz. If you wanna follow me, I'm at Todd Feltz. If you guys have any thoughts or ideas, um, I will say that oftentimes my classes will take on real clients. So we take on real organizations um, and we build real campaigns over the course of the semester. So if you guys are somewhere, and I love doing, I don't like doing it in Reno. I want them to learn about things outside of town. So, you know, reach out to me, um, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram, become my friends on Facebook. Um, I post great stuff. <laughs> yeah. Roses, right? Yeah, roses. Is there a link to the slides? Um, um, yes. Will be, I, I send that to you. I, well, I have your slideshow, so I can put it up in our Google Drive and I'll, I'll put it as a comment under the Facebook live stream. Oh, cool. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time today. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.